morning and welcome to Abundant Living Ministries Cyber Church. To all you mothers here, or uh, people who want to be mothers, or were mothers, or will be mothers, or etc. etc. Everyone except you guys. <laughs> we won't even get into anything there. There are stay at home guys stay at home <laughs> mothers so happy mother's day to you too <laughs> anyway let's go ahead and stand to our feet and start off today's service with prayer lord god we just thank you so much for being here with us for loving us for uh, meeting our every single need in the way that you only you know how to do best. And we want to bring before you all the requests that are in this place. We do pray for our sister who lost her mother a little bit over a week ago. We ask, Lord God, that uh, you comfort her, that you bring people into her life, that you bring them to her to offer the, the comfort and the support that she needs. And we ask, Lord God, for all the other requests in this place, all the public and private. You know every single one. We ask that you continue to work everything out to the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And uh, that you show yourself great in every single situation. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, and I just want to pray for the service of God as we worship you, as we lift our voices and our hearts and our hands to you, God, and that um, we would just allow ourselves to bask in your glory and uh, just worship you with all that we are, and as we continue um, with um, the word that was brought, um, that is going to be brought, God, that we would also worship you in that as we listen and as we see um, what we can um, do with what's brought before us and that um, we would just have our um, full attention on you and on um, the service, God, and that we would um, also just take some time this day for those of us that are celebrating Mother's Day, that we would spend a little time with our mothers, no matter where they are. Um, even if they've passed, we can still remember them. So I just um, ask that we would do that and that you would um, help us. And we are so blessed to have our mothers, and we just thank you so much for them. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I want to add, Lord, that we thank you that I know growing up I didn't have a father in the home, but you were my father. And if we don't have our mother in the home or with us anymore, we thank you that you fill that role as well. Because when that is a need, you meet all of our needs in the perfect way that only you know how. And we ask, Lord God, now that you bless this time of giving, that you lay on each heart what to give, and that it be an act of love and worship to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Click one of the offering plates here in Second Life, or if you happen to be outside of Second Life, go to almsidebrchurch.org and click on the offering plate there.
All right, take a moment now to click the pulpit on the stage. You'll get a note card with the song lyrics and scriptures for the message today. And let's just lift our hands, our hearts, our voices, and let everything that is within us bless His holy name. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well.
the promise keeper, you are father and mother to the orphan and the seeker. You're the word of God come as a man, the solid rock on which I stand, and you are the everlasting God. Comforter to those who sorrow, promiser of joy tomorrow, bringer of peace unshaken, keeper of the most forsaken. You are the shining beacon when the waves are dark and raging. Your voice speaks in the storm. Peace be still. When all the world is sinking sand, you are the solid rock on which I stand. You are hope for the hopeless, help for the helpless. You are the
of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. is my soul.
Father God, thank you for this time in your presence. I ask that my words would be glorifying to you, that everything that happens in this place would bring light and others toward you, God. And I ask that um, whatever I say um, would um, encourage someone today. And just pray all these things in the name of Jesus, in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus. I pray these this in His name. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Today in some parts of the world is Mother's Day. I hope you have shown appreciation for the mothers in your life. I sent my mom a card. Made sure my mother-in-law got hers. She doesn't live that far away. I am not going to speak about mothers today, however. No, today my Farsa chat is on something else. So I want you all to get comfortable. Sit yourselves down and maybe you have some tea, coffee, something to eat, what have you. Um, I tried to make this kind of short, but um, I just hope that you all are encouraged by what I'm going to say. And I'm actually going to be singing a, a, a part of a song. Many of you will know it. So here it goes. Eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. Sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And if you haven't figured it out, today's fireside chat is titled, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Have you ever seen a sparrow? There are these not so very beautiful birds. They're mostly brown in color. Brown is not necessarily my favorite color. Um, and they're small. And yet, God made this bird. And in Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, it says, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. See, in God's eyes, even sparrows have value. These mostly brown, they're not very beautiful, small little birds have value in God's eyes. It shows that we are very precious to him, to God. He knows and cares for us more than these, more than the sparrows, more than all kinds of other creation. He cares about us. He knows us. I think there are many of us, and I didn't put this, I didn't write this down, but I wanted to interject in my notes here. We think that God has forgotten us. There is something going on and we think he forgot about us. But that's not true. There are multiple, multiple, multiple stories in the Bible about people that they for thought that God had forsaken them and he had not. That is not part of their story. But Mary, 
Mary, Mary Oposa. Jesus on the cross. Yes. That may be the one time that I believe. Now, this is my own personal belief that God may have supposedly forsaken someone. Because he had to turn his face away because Jesus had taken upon all of mankind's sin. And God cannot look upon sin. So when his son did that, though it was the plan, God had to look away for that time. But that's an, another, we could go off on that tangent right now and we'd go down a different road, but we're not going to go to do that. I want everyone here to know that you are not Jesus on the cross. God did not forsake you. Okay? And I am going to tell you a few other things that I know and I hope that will encourage you. About a week or so ago, it's been a while, it was raining really hard. I mean, we were having a storm. Could have very well been tornado weather for all I know. I mean, it was really raining hard. And I could hear the wind. That's how loud it was. It was storming so hard. So very, very hard. hear the thunder but in the midst of the storm I heard something else do you want me to tell you what it was no it wasn't a cat <laughs> it wasn't human birds were singing Birds were singing in the storm. It made me smile to hear them because it was their way of worshiping God, even though they were in a storm, literally. It made me realize how courageous they were. These birds, I mean, birds, think about it. Birds are not the most strong creatures. Especially not the ones that are living around. They, these were not hawks and eagles and falcons and all those other ones, you know, that are strong birds and think of them as birds of prey and stuff. No, these were little birds. I've seen them. These were the normal, you know, like carnal. They might have been, there might have been sparrows and things like that. Birds that, in this storm, they could have died. You know, in my thinking, because of how strong it was of a storm, but they were singing, and I and of course my mind was going off, and, and I'm thinking, I mean, we can sing all we want about praising God in the storm, all we want. We can sing it, we can we can sing about it as often as we want to, but until we are actually in a storm and praising him, that's when the true faith comes to play. Can we sing his praises in the storm and out? So in other words, are we in other words, what I'm really saying is God Your God is He your provider, your everything in the storm and out. You are you're not just a Christian when you're in the storm, are you? Or when you're not in the storm. It's easy when you're not. When there isn't peril. When you're not struggling. When you're not suffering. It's easy then. Isn't it? Can
can you sing praises to God even if you are in a storm and everything around you is falling apart? Can you do that? What will you do when you're in that place? When everything around you is falling apart, or it feels like it, and you think that God is so far, far away, he can't see you, the dark clouds have covered you, the thunder is so loud, the lightning flash is scary. You think you're alone. Can God even see you? Those birds didn't sing because they were in a storm. All right, what are you saying? Okay. No. I'll tell you. No. They were singing because they were happy. They were free. And they knew he was watching over them. Remember the song? It's going back to that. Okay, so you're going through a storm. So things aren't going the way you want them to. Things are happening. Horrible things are happening. And you, you, you're, you're wondering, does God even see me? Does God even care? And on your lips is not praise. Because you're so far away from that part. You're so frustrated. You're so angry about what's happening. And you could not possibly have a praise on your lips because you're not happy and you do not feel free. And you don't know who's watching over you. Am I speaking to anybody? We all have been there where we're not happy, when we, where we don't feel free, and we don't know who's watching us, who's watching over us. Because we're so messed up, we're so uptight, we're so frustrated, because we aren't happy, and we don't feel free. We can't see beyond what's going on. And I, I want you to listen to the next parts. I'm going to try to give you some answers. And I'm not very, I'm not a theologian. I just lived a lot of this. See, though the thunder and the rain is all around, though I can see the lightning in the distance, I know, yes, I know, he, capital H, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, he is watching me. Do you know how I know these things? I've been through some stuff. And a lot of you know what I've been through. I've been abused by some men in my life. 
that should have protected me. They didn't. They treated me horribly. Horribly. And at times, still sometimes, I don't feel happy and I don't feel free. I feel trapped. I feel broken. I feel sad and I feel very upset. Very upset. God tells me it's okay to be upset because I was hurt. But I don't dwell on those feelings. Because I also know from experience, from what I've been through, that He watches me. I don't know, some of you probably know this, but when I was 13, I was laying in my bed and I was looking up at the ceiling and in that house there was water damage on the ceiling because of the 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 attic would leak and it would come through the ceiling. And I was watching the and after a time of being abused and I had a thought and it wasn't actually a fleeting thought. This was a thought, and I, I actually went through the process of the possibility. I didn't make an attempt at suicide, but there is the possibility of an attempt. Because I was thinking, what's the use? Nobody is listening to me. It's happening again. Nobody listened. And I don't know if you believe me or not, and I don't really care. I know who talked to me that day as I was laying on my bed. It wasn't someone in flesh and blood. It was the voice of God through Holy Spirit, I know. And he told me not to do what I was planning really I really was planning he was pretty much telling me that he was watching me he knew it was happening he was trying to stop it and my abusers would not listen to him it's a sad thing to realize the men in your life that were supposed to protect you at that point weren't listening to God though they were professing that they were Christians. But God was saying he was watching me. I was one of his sparrows and I was precious to him and he did not want me to do what I had in all reality possibly followed through with he had a bigger plan and that's why I'm here right now I want you all to know we are his little sparrow so to speak he has his eye on us he wants us to take care of ourselves and he wants us to know that he loves us very very much I'm going to sing that little part of the song again because well this is my first I chat and I can do that but I also think the words are very important and maybe it'll have you singing it after the service too reminding yourself his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. 
And I know he watches. He watches me. Yes, he does. He watches you and he watches me. He wants to take very good care of us. Okay now, y'all, <laughs> um, it is time for the close of the service. It's time for the altar call. And it's going to be like this. I want you to find a comfortable, pl comfortable place. Now, if it's in Second Life and it's in the pew, that's fine. If it's in Second Life and it's up at the altar, that's fine. If it is in real life, and it's in your bedroom, kneeling by your bed, that's fine. Wherever your comfortable place is, wherever you want to go, if it's your secret place, you go to your secret place. It doesn't really matter to me. You go and you spend time with God, whatever you want. You, This is your time to talk to God like your friends. Maybe you need some, to confess something to him. Maybe you want to spend time at the table and you sit there and you have coffee with Jesus. Do whatever you want. But talk to him. Love on him. Let him love on you. I think we so we forget so much sometimes as people, and not just Christians or men and women, but just as people to take care of ourselves. And a lot of times people there will be like, oh, women need more of that than men. I don't know about that. My husband sometimes spends so much time on a project that he forgets to eat. And that's not good. He, he has type one diabetes, so I have to remind him to eat. <laughs> Even if his stomach is telling him it's time to eat, sometimes he just ignores it because he's so engrossed in his project. So, we need to love on ourselves so that we can then love on other people. We need to take care of ourselves so we can take care of other people. Of course, if you need prayer or ministry or just want to talk to someone, you can instant message one of us on the ministry team and we will be glad to help you in any way we can. Now, if you want to send a message to the pastors and um, you don't want to do it through Second Life, if you're in Second Life, you can go to almcyberchurch.org and there is a place there, it's called Pastor's Offices, you can leave a message there for us and we will return um we'll reply rather as soon as we can now after this time at the altar we always have a time of fellowship in the room of the stairs to your left i hope you all will come because it's so much fun and it might be kind of weird where we sit <laughs> there's these wagons and they go around in a circle and we just sit there and talk usually about all kinds of things um I hope you can come and join us because it's just a fun time um we don't do anything real serious now of course if there's a need um there's a prayer need or something uh and it wasn't taken care of at the altar um we can do it there or you need to talk about something serious that's fine too if you want other people's opinions other than just those on the ministry team we'll talk about anything that's appropriate, of course. Um, and of course, if you need to leave, you're free to do so. I just hope and pray that this service has encouraged you and that, um, I don't know about you, but I know thinking of the fact that God sees me and he's watching over me and he cares for me and he loves me very much more than I probably even know is important to me and last things that I want to say may God bless you this week 
May he who watches sparrows show you just how precious you are to him. For, of course, if you are his, you are on his mind after all. Go in his wonderful peace.